Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together and your favorite uncle is back to give you some physics. If you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you're part of the family and of course uh, uh, you can get in touch with us. Our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so we'll be looking at uh, vectors in two dimension and uh, in particular vectors at equilibrium, right? Uh, so um, let's get right into the question and uh, hope you enjoy it, right? So here we're given a question. They say we've got a 250 kilogram engine of a car um, that is suspended. That is, it's held stationary by two ropes that are tied to the ceiling of a house, right? T1 makes an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal and T2 makes an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. Uh, if the engine is held in a stationary position, right? Uh, well, I guess it bears repeating. Uh, answer the questions that follow. All right. Now, um, I want to, uh, first of all, tackle this question um, by using, you know, the triangular law of forces in equilibrium, right? And why would we say that uh, this is a system in equilibrium? Um, well, they told us that the engine is held in a stationary position, right? So all that simply means is that we know that uh, the system must be at equilibrium, right? Now, we're going to talk about uh, just a few things just now, but um, let's start with the first question. They say, draw a free body diagram showing all forces acting on the engine. All right, now let's go right into that. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so we know we'd have force, uh, the tension on T1. Okay, so uh, in fact, they didn't indicate. Uh, okay, so they said T1 is the one that makes an angle of 40. So yeah, definitely this is T1. Okay, so uh, we also have force T2, right? Um, that makes an angle of uh, 20 degrees. Okay, so we've got both T1 and T2, or you can say the force on T2. Here you can say the force on T1. And of course, you know that we would have the gravitational force in this case. Okay, if we've got something that is suspended, um, I did not actually use my straight lines here, which I should have. Okay, uh, so we know that we also have the force of gravity and here we are, okay? Right, so now um, here are the forces, okay? Sorry for the other squiggly, uh, uh, you know, diagrams or rather uh, arrows or uh, lines that I've, I've drawn, okay? So here we are, we've got our forces and we know that this one uh, makes an angle of 40 degrees, okay? And T2 makes an angle of 20 degrees, even though it doesn't seem so in my diagram, uh, but nonetheless, we know that is what it is, right? Now, the second question, they say, state the triangular law of vectors at equilibrium, Okay, uh, remember what the law simply states is that if we've got three vectors that are in equilibrium or at equilibrium, they can be represented by a triangle with each side taken in order of its magnitude and direction. Okay, right. So what does that mean to us? It means we can actually interpret this diagram in terms of a triangle, right? Let's do that, okay? I'm not going to write down number two. I've stated it, um, but let's do that. Let's try and interpret what we have in a diagram form um, as a triangle, right? So let's take each side. So I'm going to start with gravitational force, okay? So there we are, we've got gravity. We know that that is 250. And by the way, this is not a diagram that will be drawn to scale, right? And then, um, so I know that we start, remember when we draw a, uh, a diagram or a vector diagram of forces in equilibrium, a triangular diagram, we need to have a head to tail diagram. Why? Because every single force is an equilibrium, okay? So, um, there's our second force there that's going to be 
uh, the tension on T1, okay? Right, remember I did say that I'm not drawing it to scale, so that's T1 for us. Now, we do know that T1 makes an angle of 40 degrees, so I'm going to just uh, make a horizontal line there and write down 40 degrees, just for us to remember, right? But we also have T2 uh, in this case, so I am going to draw T2 in that diagram, I mean in that direction, okay? So there's our T2 there, okay? Right, just so that there are no gaps, okay? It needs to be a closed diagram, right? So in this case, there we are. We've got those three forces and note that it is a head-to-tail diagram, right? So there's our T2. And we know that T2 makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. Now, you'll forgive me uh, if my diagram doesn't necessarily show that uh, very nicely. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we will work with what we have. Okay. Right. Now, in this case, let's do a little bit of geography. Uh, I mean, uh, geometry. <laughs> Listen to me talk about geography. Uh, so let's do a bit of geometry. Now, in this case, we would know that uh, between, right, let me just show that, this horizontal line here in green, right, and in this case, and the gravitational force, which is a vertical line, okay, the angle between them is 90, right? Now, if the angle in between, in this case, that 20 degree, uh, uh, that angle there is 20 degrees, then what does it mean? It would mean that this angle in here would be 90 minus the 20 degrees, right? So therefore, the angle inside the triangle would be 70 degrees. Okay, right. So I'm trying to show that there. Uh, okay, right. Let me just remove all these hojakis. Uh, okay, so the angle inside there uh, would be 70 degrees. I hope you understand that. Okay. Now, again, um, we are going to be looking for another try. I mean, another angle. All right. So we knew that. So if we draw another horizontal line at the bottom there, right? So think about it. So it means that these two lines would be parallel to each other. And once we've got parallel lines, then we know that we would have alternating angles, right? So this would be 40 degrees, and it means that that angle there would also be 40 degrees, right? So if that's 40, again, all right, please note that this makes an angle of 90 degrees. So if that's 40 degrees inside there, okay, I'm going to just write it in green there, okay? So it means that the angle inside would actually be 90 minus 40, which is 50 degrees, okay? Right, so this angle in here would be 50 degrees, right? Okay, so that it's not a clumsy diagram. Okay, I'm going to try and remove all the other things, right? Now, uh, of course, what else do we know? Okay, uh, let me just remove that for the purpose of, you know, the triangle. Right, so if that angle is 70, okay, and the other is 50, then what does it say about, okay, this angle, okay, yeah, okay. What does it say about this angle in here, right? So we're going to use the sum of angles on a triangle, right? We know that they're equal to 180. So if it's 180 minus 70, and minus uh, 50 degrees, right? So in this case, that would be uh, subtract 120, okay? So it, which means rather that angle there would be 60 degrees. I hope that you got that, okay? Um, am I correct? Yes, 70 plus 50, that's 120, and plus 60, that would be 180. So ladies and gents, that is our triangle. 
Okay, remember it's not drawn to scale. The whole purpose of this triangle is to help us calculate the values of the force, which is our next question. They say determine either by scale drawing or calculation uh, the magnitude of T1 and T2. Now, now that we've completed our diagram or our triangle, we can now use the um, you know the sine rule or the cos rule depending on which one would be applicable here right so we can look into the triangle and say well um, first of all what other uh, force do we know well we know the force of gravity right in this case is mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration uh, this would be 250 multiplied by 9.8 Okay, um, so let's get our calculator here. So that's 250 times 9.8. That gives us 2,450. So 2,450 newtons. That's our force of gravity, right? So we know this force here, uh, over here, which is the gravitational force. We know the magnitude thereof, okay? Right, and now let's look for T1 and T2, okay? So remember, um, we are going to use the sine rule. If you don't know why that is the case, please watch our previous lessons, okay, where I introduced the, um, you know, vectors in equilibrium. So what we're going to say is that it's going to be T1 divided by the sine of this angle that is opposite T1. So it's T1 divided by the sine of 70 degrees, which is equal to, now remember, because I want T1, it has to be part of my equation. And then I use what I already have. I know the side here, right? Which is force of gravity, right? In this case, or the weight. Um, yeah, you can also call it the weight, by the way. Uh, uh, in this case, um, and the angle opposite that is the 60 degrees there, right? So this is equal to force of gravity divided by the sine of 60 degrees. Remember, you only use the cost rule when you've got only two sides and an included angle. And usually we're going to use that when we're looking for the resultant force, right? Okay, so now let's look for T1. So we're going to cross multiply. So this is going to be T1, the sine of 60 is equal to uh, force of gravity multiplied by the sine of 70. Okay, so divided by the sine of 60 on both sides, sine of 60. And now let's find the value for T1. This is 2450 sine 70 divided by sine of 60. All right, let's do that quickly. So that's going to be uh, 2450, uh, the sine of uh, 70. And please just make sure that your calculators are in degrees, right? Uh, divided by the sine of 60. Okay, so I get a value of 2658. And you must remember these values uh, because there is an alternative method that I would want us to consider. Uh, but we'll do that in the next video, okay? So T1 is equal to uh, 2,654, uh, 58.4 newtons, all right? So that's the magnitude of T1. Now looking at T2, let's go to our triangle again, right? Uh, let me try and just get rid of some stuff here, okay? Uh, perhaps do that in a different color, all right? So... What I'm going to do is I'm looking for T2, but the angle that is opposite T2 is the 50 degrees. And I'm still going to use the force of gravity because it's a force that we know. Okay. Uh, and the angle opposite that is 60. So this is going to be T2 over the sine of 50 degrees, which is equal to the force of gravity divided by the sine of, um, we said 60, right? Okay, yeah, just to make sure. Right, so let's find T2. Okay, again, we cross multiply, that's going to be T2, the sine of 60 is equal to 
force of gravity is sine of 50. Okay, so divide by sine of 60 on both sides. Okay, and we know that the value of T2, okay, uh, that's 2450, the sine of 50 divided by the sine of 60. Right, okay, let's get to the answer there. Um, let me actually just be smart about this. I'm just going to change that so that sine 50. So the value there is 2167, right? Uh, please just verify that for me. Okay, so that is going to be 2167 and that would be the force on T2. All right, um, I hope that you were able to follow that and understand it. Okay, so what I want to do in the next video, I'm going to be answering the very same question, but this time I'm going to be using components of a, of a force, right? So instead of using, you know, our sine rule and cos rule, this time I'm going to be using the vector components. All right, ladies and gents, I hope you don't forget to subscribe and like, and I hope this lesson has been somewhat helpful to you. Otherwise, from me, your favorite uncle, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.